but is it fast? Well, to find out, I'm gonna launch this. Put in first, build the revs. Yeah! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I have a review on a 2011 BMW 116D. Now, this isn't just any 116D, this is in fact mine. And another funny thing is, is that the first ever BMW I ever owned was in fact a 2015 facelift uh, M Sport 116D. So I'm quite familiar with these, but this being a 2011 model, it's a bit different to that 2015 facelift one I had. So this is a ES Sport or Sport ES uh, trim. I'm not too clued up about the trims when you get down to the base spec, but I'm pretty sure this is the base spec. So it's not got much kit and it'll become more apparent when I come inside the car. Now, initially, I'm not the biggest fan of the pre-facelift base model. I just think it, it's not the most attractive looking car, which may sound weird to say, why would you buy this? Well, I didn't, I kind of became desperate. And I needed a car quick. So this is what I got essentially. It's my work wagon, does all the work miles. Um, but yeah, I do like the, the clown shoe of, uh, or bread van styling on the side. That is something I do like. Kind of reminds me of the Z3M Coupe, which I'm very fond of. Just in general, I'm not an overly biggest fan of the design if it's not an M Sport. It just looks a bit boring. And if you come around the back, you have like these, these lights at the back, which remind me of like uh, the Polo. Not the current generation. It is the current generation and the previous generation. I can't remember the, which mark generation they are. But yeah, just these lights in general just look very Polo-esque. But on the M Sport, it looks much better. Paint colour is in fact sapphire black, which was also my facelift 116. My first BMW was also sapphire black, but this is a bit faded because it is near enough 10 years old. And we do have 16 inch alloys, which eh, not the, it's an all right design. Uh, not exactly in the best condition. And if we come to the front ones, you get the optional brake dust effect on them which definitely need a clean. But we have the brilliant uni oil, the rain tire, the umbrella on it. Look at that. And of course, around the front, we have halogen lights as well. I'm not sure if you could spec uh, LEDs on the base model. But yeah, that, that's about it really for the exterior. Not really much more to show you. So let's get inside and show you where the magic happens. So inside, you agree to this plaque down here which says BMW instead of M Sport because it's not an M Sport model. But at least you still get the BMW plaque there. If we get inside, you can see the, the video twice, which is brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think this car has definitely stood test of time. I'd still think it's aged gracefully. Uh, compared to the current generation, it's night and day difference. It's such a beautiful interior. But this is still an okay interior. Fit and finish is still good. I don't get any rattles or squeaks. And this has done about 116,000 miles. I think the only rattle I get is at the back where the seats are. I'm not, I haven't discovered what that is yet. But yeah, in general, this is actually quite a specced out base model. If this is a base model, I'm not too sure. Uh, so basically, this screen here is an option because when I look at an auto trader, you can, I've looked at the same model, the ES Sports model, whatever it's called, spider there, get out of the way, ruining my video. You can actually get this without the screen, which just looks so bare. You just have like this alcove exposed, which I just think is tragic looking, if I'm honest. It, it, does, it just looks so bare and the interior just doesn't look, look right without the screen. I mean, there's not much you can actually do on it, that spider's still there. Move out of the way! You can, well, I've got my phone there. You can see like your aux cables and you can do various other functions. Look at your BMW services and look at some settings. So you have a bit of functionality, but obviously there's no sat nav or anything there. So yeah, without the screen, you also get, don't get this iDrive controller. So down here you have like this little, uh, a really small storage unit which to me just looks 
a bit naff, if I'm honest, but it's, be it's better than nothing. Uh, something else which we also get is an armrest. I believe you don't get an armrest. This is like a partial one. It's open, but it's still a bit of storage area and an aux cable down here. No USBs in this early model. I also have climate control, I forgot to tell you. That's something quite a lot of BMWs don't have, even if they are M Sport. So I'm quite fortunate on that regard. And then if you come to the steering wheel, you can see I've got buttons, which doesn't sound like a revelation, but uh, yeah, base model, you don't have any buttons in the steering wheel, no cruise control, um, which I think is a bit criminal. Um, considering it's a BMW, you kind of expect at least buttons or a cruise control on the BMW for the premium price you're paying. Uh, you have storage down here. I'm not sure if that's optional. Uh, we don't have auto lights. There's also uh, some air vents down here with a 12 volt socket. I'd believe, depending what options you have, you don't get those vents. It's just like a, a, a bare like cubby hole just there. So yeah, this car is not actually badly specced from the inside, considering it's a base model. If you come to the door cards, you have like this nice material on the door cards. Practicality wise, we actually have two places to put our bottles here, which can accompany this chocolate milk, which is really nice. This is no ad. You can also fit it down here. Maybe here, no, just, just this, the middle one here, which can fit larger bottles. I have tested that. So I'll just put that back here for now because it rattles in that one for some because of this like loose plastic. Oh, an option I almost forgot. I have front and rear parking sensors, which doesn't sound like much, but my missus has an M140i 67 plate, the LCI2, like the second facelift and it only has rear parking sensors. So for, so for this to have the rear and front parking sensors is brilliant. But yeah, storage wise, yeah, we're all good. Two cup holders here, good storage here. Plenty of space for chocolate milk around here and there. Glove box, not the biggest, but it's okay. But let's do the more fun stuff and let's go around to the back and test out the practicality because that is every bit important. Now, if we come into the back, uh, first thing you notice is that it's quite protruding the way uh, it comes out for the door. So you do have to do this little uh, precision with your body to be able to get in. So it's quite a narrow opening. Uh, this is in my drive position. Um, I do sit quite far back because I have no explanation why. I just find it comfortable, even though I'm only five foot eight and a half. I still have decent leg room. Maybe because I sit quite low to the ground, I could do a tad bit more height, but decent leg room. Uh, headroom is, I'm, I'm completely fine. Actually, it's pretty decent, five foot eight and a half, and I'm feeling pretty comfortable in here. One thing which isn't so great is having five people at the back. Uh, in my 1160, I had before, about six years ago when I went to Cavos, uh, had five people in the car, very cramped. Guy in the middle was literally straining for his life. He had literally no, because of this massive tunnel here, there's literally no place to put your feet. It's, yeah, it's not great for five people, but for four, it's, 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 it's all right. And you do have some more storage down here, but it's very minimal to say the least. And you also have some vents here, as well as your 12 volt socket. But yes, let's get onto the boot. Open it like that, which is brilliant. Love that design. And in the back, uh, yeah, 350 liters. I have no idea where the parcel shelf is. It didn't come with one when I bought it. But yeah, 350 liters. And like I said, my Cavos trip, we did manage to fit all five people in and all the while um, suitcases and stuff. But I do think, if I remember correctly, a lot of the luggage had to go on their laps and in the footwells and stuff because they, it was not enough room in here. But if you do want to go to Cavos with five people and you have lots of suitcases and stuff, it is doable, but very uncomfortable. Uh, underneath here, you have the battery and very minimal storage. Um, and 
EA, you have some like netting, uh, wipes, and some bananas. It can easily be fitted down here. Strange combination. Uh, you have a little bungee strap here, tethering points. And you also have another 12 volt socket, I believe, which is there. But yeah, practicality wise, these aren't too bad. Right, let's do the fun stuff and let's go for a drive. Seatbelt on, safety first. Start, stop button, clutch down. Yes, brilliant. Right, here we go. So what is this car like to live with on a daily basis? Well, I can please to report that it's actually really good on a, on a daily basis. This car obviously is fitted with cruise control. So the majority of my drives are on motorways and dual carriageways. So I'm sat in sixth, sixth gear and 70 miles an hour at 1800 RPM. And it's just generally an easy cruiser. You do get a bit of tire roar and you do get a bit of wind noise, but it's nothing too bad. The sound system is, well, this is a standard sound system. It's not great. But it's not bad either, it is, you do get a bit of bass, which is nice when you listen to some hardcore techno like myself, and I'm being blinded by the sun. Now this being the base model, um, you do get a good trade-off in terms of ride quality, compared to the M Sport. This has is running on 16 uh, inch wheels, and obviously this is, yeah, suspension is softer, so you do get generally a good uh, ride quality. The bumps, you don't really feel them very much. It's not like you, flat as an ironing board, but the, the bumps when you do over them, they're just like marshmallows. Like you just kind of like gently glide over them and float over them. It's not, it's not a biggie, there's no biggie. Compared to an M Sport, where you do it just feel a bit fidgety, you do feel the bumps are just a bit more, but on this, it feels pretty good. Now these seats, they are comfortable enough Nevertheless, there just is a lack of support and the bolstering is just next to non-existent. If you were to drive this car ambitiously, then you would have to be holding on just a little bit because of the body roll. Now, I'm quite a small guy myself, but if you had more generous portions, then you would have to be holding on just a little bit more around the bends. But on the whole, the steering is quite direct and it's light, which is good for everyday use. But is it fast? Well, to find out, I'm going to launch this and see what happens. So, put in first, build the revs. No. Yeah! There we go. 40. 50. 60. There we go. I hope that answers your question. Is the 1160 fast? Well, it's... It's okay. This is a two litre diesel. Um, it's got about 115 horsepower, just about under 200 foot pound of torque, give or take, something around that. Nord to 60 is done in about 10.5 seconds. I'd say that's probably fair. I do believe that's true. Um, does it have enough power though for this car? It's, I'm not sure. It's roughly about 1400 kilos, but is it underpowered for its weight? Um, daily scenarios it's okay for most days but if you are caught napping and you need to you have to carry your momentum like you can't be in the wrong gear you have to be in the right gear if you want to like accelerate quickly so if someone slows you down and you're on the, and you've already caught up had your momentum and they slow it down and it takes an age to get it back which is sort of downside with this 116d running costs wise these are generally good. Like road tax is about 30 pounds. The insurance on this is really cheap. Um, filling it up is probably about, well, in the current, in today's current price, it's probably about 65, 67 quid. I think it's got about a 52 litre fuel tank. And I generally get about 500 to 550 miles. And I drive it like a ferry, so that kind of gives you some scope to what these are like. And if I'm honest completely, I'm quite underwhelmed with the MPG. My car said I've averaged about 52 miles per gallon since my ownership. 
and I did a little test the other day and I basically filled it up and then I did my normal commute and I filled it up again and basically it said that I did 48 miles per gallon and I just think that's a bit underwhelming really considering this is meant to be a 116D very the most economical diesel supposedly in their lineup the most polar bear friendly and I think 48 miles per gallon considering I drove it so carefully I just think it's a bit off not my 120D my 125D that I had I can't see a thing because of the sun they averaged roughly the same 45 47 miles per gallon so yeah I'm a bit underwhelmed really with the MPG in this car so I just do wonder whether because it's 1400 kilos and it's got the smallest output in terms of power is that the reason why it doesn't do as well in MPG as I thought it would or maybe it's because it just needs maybe some maintenance done to it maybe some valves to be cleared maybe that improved the MPG I don't know but yeah 120D and 125Ds I've owned those and they get near enough the same miles per gallon and they're so much faster and so much fun, more fun to drive but then I guess you could make the case that you could map this to make it nearly just as quick and you don't have to pay the premium that the 120Ds and the 125Ds demand over these ones and that, that's kind of like the beauty of this model in particular these 116Ds they start roughly about four grand maybe just a little bit less whereas if you want a 120D in this generation a 125 you're looking a lot more six seven eight grand instead when you could just map this i don't know i don't know what you guys think but value for money i think these cars are really good and to summarize really i don't think this actually that much of a bad car it's not doesn't really set a foot wrong if i'm honest i mean the only thing that i am just a bit underwhelmed about is the mpg i mean look at me i'm overtaking this bike wasn't too much of a struggle because I was in the second gear I was in the right gear but maybe in a 120 or 125 you could be much more pulling power in third gear but yeah this car I would definitely recommend this to someone who well if they're if they're new driver maybe quite young this is a very nice car I would definitely prefer an M Sport it looks much better but I do like the fact that this is generally like a bit more gentle and a bit softer so there you have it guys thank you very much for watching today's video uh, if you have any questions about this 116D or the ownership and anything about that then please do let me know um, if you aren't subscribed please do and if you're like 96% of people who watch my videos who aren't subscribed I'd much appreciate it if you did subscribe because uh, they've been fantastic so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the future.